The RTX 40 series launch so far has been quite the roller coaster ride to say the least. From controversial, tiered pricing, unavailability, and just when he thought it couldn't get tarnished any further, we now have a concerning number of users all over the world reporting their 4090s connectors or adapters are melting. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Just when you thought things couldn't go more downhill for NVIDIA, all of a sudden we start seeing many posts surface on the internet from users all around the world posting pictures of burnt or melted power connectors and adapters on their RTX 4090s. This was something that I briefly touched upon in my last video when this issue was just fresh, which by the way, if you haven't seen it already, definitely recommend checking out that video. I undervolted my MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio and found that you can reduce average power consumption by over 100 watts in some games, while performance is nearly identical to stock. And I feel like this whole adapter melting situation, there's going to be a lot more people looking into doing this. This is probably one of the last things NVIDIA wanted on their plate. I mean, just a couple weeks ago, they made an announcement where they had to backtrack and unlaunch the RTX 4080 12GB because of all the pricing controversies, trying to sell a mid-range GPU for $900. And now we have users showing their flagship product potentially being a fire hazard. We'll talk about what could be causing this in just a moment, but I just wanted to throw up some of these pictures up here and take a look at what's happening. On the 24th of October, a Reddit user by the name of Reggie Gokil posted a thread with a couple pics showing their RTX 4090 adapter had burnt up. But not only that, the actual connector on the card itself had melted. And when I say melted, I mean the plastic casing surrounding the pins and metal contacts. But this just looks atrocious. Plastic looks charred up. And when I saw this, I thought, you know what, it could be a one-off. Maybe their adapter was defective. Maybe something on the card was wrong. This isn't the first time I've actually seen something like this happen. It's rare, but I have seen this happen to some 8-pin connectors, but it was extremely rare. So that's why when I first saw this pick, I didn't really think much of it at that time. That original thread blew up. It has like 3,000 comments now, and another user by the name of No Duels Policy in that same thread posted pictures from their Asus Tough 4090 and showed their power adapter had also melted on those outer pins. Doesn't look nearly as bad as the first picture, but still looks somewhat disturbing. Following that, we even saw a user on a Korean hardware site post a picture of their adapter which melted in the same spot followed by another user on the same forum showing how the connector on their Galax 4090 melted. On the NVIDIA subreddit, they have made this mega thread where they have been consolidating all the posts in one area. Um, one of the things I didn't like was that they were locking the original threads, which I thought was kind of dumb, because in mega threads, comments and valuable info can get buried. Uh, but they eventually changed it back. I just thought it was really stupid what they were doing before, because you would actually have reps from reputable companies like Cable Mods or Corsair who would be joining in on the discussion and their comments would get buried. And with how awful Reddit's search function is, you know, you wouldn't be able to find that info if someone was going out and actively trying to look for it to get some information. But you can see just today there were three more examples posted. One of them included some pictures of an MSI Gaming X Trio 4090, which just pains me to see considering I have this card sitting right beside me. Interestingly, this user in their post wrote that they had only used the card for a day, were playing Assassin's Creed, and felt the burning smell, which forced them to immediately shut off the PC. They had even pointed out that they tried to keep the cables as straight as possible. Despite that, it still happened. Now, I checked the adapter and connector on my 4090. I haven't noticed anything, but I do also have it installed on an open test bench, though I'm not even sure if that really matters at this point. There are some more examples in that thread, and I'm sure there will be more to come, but something has gone terribly wrong here, and this seems like a pretty widespread issue. New hardware having issues near launch is nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, almost all of Nvidia's releases have had some sort of issue. With the RTX 30 series, we had that whole MLCC postcap debacle, which ended up just being a driver bug. With the 20 series, there were issues with some of the earlier cards having issues with GDDR6 modules. With the 10 series, there were problems with 1080 crashing due to poor drivers. When AMD had released their RX 480, there were reports of the card drawing more than 75 watts from the PCIe slot. There have been problems with lots of generations of GPUs, but 
We haven't really come across a situation that was quite like this, at least not for a while now. With this issue blowing up, there's been many tech review outlets and YouTubers have who have talked about the problems and have tried to explain what they think might be causing the problem. Igor from Igor's Lab posted a pretty interesting article on his site where he basically dissected one of NVIDIA's 4x8 pin power adapters and found that instead of running individual leads to the pins on the connector, they've instead soldered the uh, wires across multiple pins. In a summary, Igor pointed out the following. The current trigger is NVIDIA's own adapter to 4x8 pin in the accessories whose inferior quality can lead to failures and has already caused damages in single cases. Splitting each of the four 14 gauge leads onto each of the six pins in the 12 VHPWR connector of the adapter by soldering them onto bridges that are much too thin is dangerous because the ends of the leads can break off at the soldering joints when kinked or bent several times. Bending or kinking the wires directly at the connector of the adapter puts too much pressure on the solder joints and bridges so they can break off. And this is also one of the reasons why Cable Mod even recommended for their own custom cable that about 35 millimeters from the connector, try not to bend the cable. Not up and down, not to side to side, not anywhere. This to me is just one of those eyebrow raising moments. Like why the hell would they implement such a crappy connector then if the user can't even put the slightest bend on it? But anyways, we'll get to that in just a moment. So that was Igor's take on the matter, and I thought he had shared some pretty interesting information there, which could be one of the reasons why people are experiencing issues. Another YouTuber who I like to watch is Buildzoid, also known as Actually Hardcore Overclocking, on their YouTube channel, and they posted a video talking about the connector. I'll actually have links to all of the articles and videos I mentioned in the video description. But he pointed out something different from Igor, and that the problem lies in the terminals in the adapter that NVIDIA are using. He points out that since NVIDIA is using a multi-split terminal, there isn't any horizontal force for them to make proper contact with the pins, thus increasing resistance and causing the adapter to melt. This explanation makes more sense to me, not to discredit Igor's findings because, you know, that also seems pretty viable to me. If you look at the custom cables, they're not using less leads soldered across multiple pins. But if we take a look at all the pictures, the one thing they all have in common is that the melting appears to have happened and seems to start at the outer pin, not from the portion where the sleeve is or where the solder joints are. Boot Sequence on their channel have a pretty good demonstration where they showed how disconnecting and reconnecting the pins to the terminals and also bending because of cable management causes it to loosen up over time and this results in a loose connection which again increases resistance thus resulting in the higher heat and which could result in the melted power adapter. However, a lot of those users who posted pictures of their melted adapters said they never even exceeded their 30 insertion cycle rating and some of them hadn't even unplugged it since they installed the GPUs for the first time in their system. So what this tells me is that the adapter NVIDIA have supplied is just awful quality, and it could be due to the split terminals having a really loose tolerance. A user on the NVIDIA subreddit shared some pictures which uh, compared the NVIDIA adapter to Corsair's and CableMod 16-pin cable. The NVIDIA one clearly shows the two splits, and looking at it more closely, you can see how perhaps putting a bend or a kink on the cable can disrupt the full contact with the pin. If you look at CableMod's 12 VHPWR cable, you can clearly see it has a tighter fit and is also just using one split on the terminal, not two. So what we have here is a $1600 plus graphics card that is bundled with an awfully cheap adapter, which is just unacceptable. NVIDIA hasn't even officially addressed the problem. All they've told a few select tech outlets is that they have reached out to affected individuals for an RMA and they are working with AIBs to figure out the problem. I'm hoping they come out and address it soon. Hopefully they're willing to send 4090 owners an updated adapter with better quality for free because of their mistake or rather the decision to cheap out and cut corners but foolishly cutting corners for a component that's vital to reliability and safety. And this was the other thing I wanted to talk about. I saw so many comments from people online on my own posts and in the Reddit mega thread downplaying the issue and suggesting that, hey, if you got a 4090, it's alright, just go and buy a custom cable for like $30. Or, you know, if you can afford a 4090, why don't you just go out and buy one of those new power supplies with the PCIe 5 cable. If people want to do that, hey, that's fine. And I get it, you know, you want to be able to use your fancy new toy, so they're not going to let this stop them. But in my opinion, the user shouldn't be responsible for 
the shortcomings or the mistakes of the company. We shouldn't normalize this behavior. The company should be responsible for fixing the problem. By saying I'm just going to buy my own custom cable with my own money, you let these companies become complacent and the next time an issue like this occurs, they're not going to be eager to fix it. They'll just assume the customer will buy their own workaround. But I really don't think the user should be responsible for supplementing their own fix. It just doesn't seem right to me. Just buy a new power supply, you can afford it. That that pissed me off, because by that logic, BMW should just put crappy ball tires on their new cars, and well, you the buyer should just go out and buy better tires because you're rich. You can afford a BMW, so surely you can get better tires. That's what you sound like when you peddle that ap apologetic behavior. How about Nvidia shouldn't cut corners and supply a good quality adapter with their $1600 plus graphics card? The decision to utilize and mandate the new 12VHPWR connector was quite dumb. Buildzoid in his video explained that it's actually worse than using three separate 8-pin connectors. And I also showed in my previous video that Nvidia had no good reason to push the 4090 to 450 watt stock. They just did it because they wanted to look good in benchmarks. However, with the lower power draw requirement, they could have stuck with the tried and true 8 pin power connectors. I mean, they still can, it's just perhaps they wouldn't have been so eager to do it with the higher power draw. They could have used smaller heat sinks, reduced the amount of materials, which would have lowered cost, and, you know, would have given us better pricing as a result. But seriously, are we now at the point where safety and reliability takes a backseat to aesthetics? Does this look cleaner than this? Maybe, but if the trade-off is a shittier connector, then forget about it. Anyways, this video has become longer than I had anticipated. I'm wondering what the solution to this will be. Is Nvidia willing to ship out an updated connector? Obviously, it'll take some time. It can't happen overnight, so do you continue to use your 4090 with the potential risk of the connector and adapter melting? I don't know. But I don't think the customer buying custom cables is the answer. I currently have my 4090 on my test bench because I still want to do a bunch of tests with it. And I know CableMod sells a custom 12VH PWR connector cable for this EVGA G3 power supply that I have. But, you know, what happens when I move the card over to my other system which uses a Corsair power supply? Do I have to go out and buy another cable for that too? It just doesn't seem practical to me. But hey, the silver lining is that AMD have officially stated RDNA 3 won't be using the new connector and will be using the traditional 8-pin connectors, so that's good. Should help sway over a lot of buyers towards their side simply because of that decision. But we'll see what happens. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.